Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jason Rockman. Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a show where we talk to interesting people about all kinds of things. Thank you so much for joining us again on this journey. And uh, right out of the gate, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. They help us keep the lights on. Here I am holding up a bottle of the Louisiana style. This is the one that they've collaborated with UFC legend Dustin Poirier. And you can get this now at heartbeathotsauce.com. If you use my promo code ROCKMAN20, which I will put right down there, it'll get you 20% off your entire order. So a big shout out to Heartbeat for helping us uh, keep this podcast alive and for being there with us uh, along the entire way. I want to bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan, what's going on? Oh, nice. You got the, let, let me guess. Is that the dill pickle? Uh, no, it's my favorite red har- uh, red uh, habanero. Red habanero. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can't pronounce words, but you, it's okay. you know this. Yeah, There's yeah. been enough episodes. Yeah, yeah. We've established <laughs> that I don't know words. These. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. That one. I, I, I really, I really enjoy that. Um, also, want to thank our uh, friends over at Studio House Designs. You are rocking an A twenty four shirt. Um, that is the Green Knight shirt, and uh, this is a classic, the Midsummer shirt. So thanks to them for always making us look fresh. You can go check them out at studiohousedesigns.com. And uh, they're awesome too. Ryan. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for telling me how to pronounce Midsommar. <laughs> Where you were going, it's Midsommar. Well, you called it Midsommar. I thought it was called Midsummer, like Midsummer Night's Dream. But then again, I don't know words. We've yeah. established this. <laughs> Actually, I saw Green Knight uh, because they made a shirt of it. Because uh, the rest of the A24, I mean, you look at Uncut Gems. And yeah, yeah. You look at all these amazing movies, and I'm like, well, Green Knight probably rules if, you know, Studio House Design's making it. So decided to jump, I decided to jump in, watch the movie, finally been meaning to for years. Good movie, right? Completely blew me away, man. So Yeah, I yeah. love that movie. I love, I'm a happy love, love camper. that movie. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good movie, and um, it's a there's solid company, man. Solid company out of Philadelphia. Big out. Shout out to Aaron and Cody from Studio House, keeping us um, looking fresh. Uh, you know, Ryan, I don't know about you, but there's very few people on the planet that have their own lunchbox. Well, I mean, are there? There are. Well, people, Think people about it. we know. Yeah. You, you have to be, in order to have your own You have to be lunch. dead to have your own lunchbox, well, technically, because it was all the rage back in the day. Yes. But these I mean, days, it, they're not exactly making lunchboxes nor having people on air. So, so yeah. lunchboxes back in the 60s, 70s they were really popular. Um, and in order to have a, a metal lunchbox, you usually were a pretty established pop culture property, right? Like a big a TV metal show. metal anything, really. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> our guests this week have their own <laughs> lunchbox. Now that's metal, Jason, even though it's hip-hop. Check it out. Wow. That is a Zarface lunchbox. Okay, that's cool. Okay, that is Zarface Everyone in podcast lunchbox. land who can't see what we're looking at, uh, this is a thing of beauty. Yeah. And it's one of those lunchboxes, actually, that's a little three-dimensional. You know, yep. you could ro- put your fingers across it and get all the, uh, you know, the, feel uh, all the shapes. As they say, it's embossed. So uh, oh, this that's is red. what that means. That's that's what, yeah. More word, word learning words with Ryan. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've learned like four today. That's amazing. <laughs> so this is the Zarface lunchbox, okay, um, which I think is absolutely really, really rad. When you picked up the Zarface lunchbox, you opened it up, and inside was the new Zarface album, Zarmageddon, on cassette. <laughs> Another throwback. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> right? That's uh, amazing. And they also have their own trading cards. Jesus. Um, and this is a, a chase card that was really, really hard to find. So, and, oh, you know, they, they've also got an action figure and Zarface is a project, um, that was put together by a couple of guys from Boston and, uh, one of the me- founding members of the Wu-Tang Clan, Inspector Deck. So we have a chance today, don't worry, I'm not giving you one of these. We have a chance today to sit down with one of the members of Zarface. Um, or you're, you're sad. I know that you can get them if you go to Zarface.com. <laughs> Well, I wasn't sad until you're like, none for you. No soup for you. <laughs> no action figures for you. Actually, it was my buddy Pepe that ordered this. So this is the thing with Zarface. They put stuff up on pre-order or on order, and it flies. So this is, I think, the fifth action figure that they've put out. Look at that. Look at See that? Look at that. Um, and they did this collab with Super 7 and uh, Reaction Figures. Really, really cool stuff. But what I love about Zarface is that, Ryan, not only is it a... Um, is it a super cool project musically, but they've got a lot of moving parts and different elements in the project. So, you, you know, they've got 
incredible merch. They've got an incredible aesthetic. They're incredible uh, artists. And they've got a really, really rampant fan base that just absolutely love them. So much so that at one point, because they were in the um, the uh, Venom movie on the soundtrack, Tom Hardy handpicked them to be on the Venom soundtrack because he loved them so much. There was a rumor going around that Tom Hardy was a member of Zarface on one of their last recordings, which is the most ridiculous thing in the world. We're going to address that when we talk to to um, one of the members today. So, um, but without any further ado, I, and I know you're excited about this because you're going to learn a lot. And whenever you enter into the podcast, when you're not knowing much, you usually yeah. are pretty, you usually come out of it pretty happy. So, well, that- yeah, because when I'm editing it together, it's not repetitive or redundant. It's yeah. just like when something's new, it's just like, you know, it's late at night and, you know, doing everything else. And I'm just like, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're going to like this. This is uh, his name is um, Esoteric, and he's one of the founding members of Zarface. He used uh, used to be in a, a project. Well, he was a solo rapper named Esoteric, and he's been in several other projects. But the Zarface project is, I think it's about eight years old now. Coming up on it's closing in on a decade, and this project has just taken off. It's it's become one of the the biggest juggernauts in hip hop right now, and it's I'm really really excited to be sitting down with um, one of the members of Zarface. Check it out. This is Esoteric from Zarface right here on the Rockman Power Hour. Listen, man, thanks for taking the time to chat today. Um, yeah, you know I I've never. We've chatted briefly. We've done a couple little interviews here and there. Um, I got to spend a bit of time with you guys bef- before Christmas. Um, but I've never yeah. really gotten to ask you straight up how Zarface really got off the ground. And I've always been curious. And, you know, I know that you were doing a lot of stuff with with um, with, with 7L before you guys had a project. But where at what point did you say, I want to marry, you know, my love of comic books? And, and I mean, because in hindsight, you can look back and go, this was a brilliant marketing plan. I mean, you guys have a, you guys have this thing that just, it's like a juggernaut. It just keeps going. People have bought into it. People are committed to it. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're interested in it. Um, but do you remember the point where you had this idea, the name, all of it? I want to get to that. Too. That's what I really want to try to find out today. Yeah, um, definitely. Well, the, the idea initially came from uh, doing a group with Inspect the Deck, which was something that we thought was out of reach. You know, we did a, a record with Deck. Um, and maybe 1999, just one song. And then right. we kind of kept, we kept in touch, and, you know, we exchange ideas here and there or a verse here or there or a beat and collaborate every so often. Some things didn't come out, some things were out, but then seven, I was like, Hey, we should do a, do a whole album with him. And I was like, are you kidding me? This guy's part of the Wu-Tang clan. Like <laughs> what? He's not going to do an album with us, you know? Right. And um, then I pitched it to him and he was down so we had a group, but we didn't have we I mean, we had, you know, two lyricists and, and me and Deck and a producer in 7L. But we needed a little bit more than that. We needed some common ground because, I mean, with Deck growing up in Killer Hill Projects and, and myself growing up out here, it just we needed something to kind of some uh, common ground. And I think our our love for sports, pop culture, wrestling, comic books, things like that was a, a real um happy medium for us to you know a lot of the stuff that i liked most about his lyrics on wu-tang records was references to spider-man or wolverine or anything like that was all would always grab my ear and he was a big influence on me as as an mc too so we needed to come up with a name and uh we threw out a few names deck suggested uh the bomb techs like bomb technicians right that it was cool but it didn't it didn't stick and we were just coming up with names. And I thought, you know, if we had something that that I was like listening to beats and everything that 7L would pitch for the project and I'd be listening, listening to them in my car like I am now yeah. uh, with my son, who was my, my son was probably, uh, you know, five or four at the time. And he would listen to them, too. And to get him to stop bugging me and listen to the music, I'd have to say, oh, that's the Magneto beat. Or that's the Green Lantern theme and just kind of make these things up on the fly. And that would have his interest because he was in a superheroes. And I said, what's a way that I can connect working on this record with one of my favorite MCs of all time, my best friend, 7L, and get my kid engaged somehow. And I came up with this idea for Zarface. 
uh, the name and the character. And um, this was going to be the name of our group. I approached Lamore Supreme about designing the look for Zarface. And, and we had a few discussions about what we wanted him to look like. And what you see now is, is Zarface. But I, I really, I, I say, I don't mean to ramble, but I, I really, on my side of things, I have to give a lot of credit to just being a dad and being, you know, in tune with my son and what he likes and mm -hmm. what I like. And, and, and growing up, raising him gave me a pass to dig into everything that I loved as a kid, yeah. even yeah. more so. And it legitimized everything. And it gave us, you know, a common language with deck and a common language with my son. And it right. all came out in music, you know? It's crazy. And, and when you, you know, uh, I'm a dad, um, I've got two kids. It, it, when, when I, you know, my, my son's my, my eldest, when I had my son and I was able to start showing him all this stuff that I was into, it was just the best feeling. And to have that common ground, um, you're, you're going to go through it soon, but my son's almost 18 and I can see how he's kind of pulling away from that now where it's just, and you know, my wife always assures me, don't worry. It's a momentary thing. He'll come back and he'll have that common love with you again. But it's like breaking my fucking heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I and I and I really feel for you when that happens. When he looks, he goes, "Dad, I don't give a fuck about Zarface anymore. I'm into this girl." <laughs> but yeah, well, you know his <laughs> his um that time might come. I think it can. It, it definitely came for me at a point where you know I started getting more interested in in hip hop and and, and girls and. Sure basketball you know what i mean but this was always something i i've had in my back pocket it's really in my dna you know because yeah. i grew up with uh you know my parents like fighting all the time and my escape was uh spider-man or he-man yeah. or gi joe whatever it might be getting into those worlds and just being by myself with those guys so that's part of you know it's in me you know what i yeah, mean Yeah, no definitely and and, and, it, and, and i mean I know because I'm the same. I grew up on that. It was my place to yeah. go to. It was my escape. And then in my teens, of course, there were times where I kind of pulled away for it. I sold all my comic books. And then, you know, there's that yeah. weird spot. And then I bought them all again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, I've done all that, but, but it's great. Yeah. To, it's great that you were able to find a link, you know, because it's true. Otherwise all those things could have been very separate. Like, you know, your past with, with seven L, you know, this project with deck, your son, like all that could have been in very different worlds, but you were able to pull that all in with, with a character, which is great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, have you ever seen uh, cloak and dagger with D Dabney Coleman? Yeah, of course. It's a, it's an eighties movie. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. Little, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had a little figurine and it was uh, Henry Thomas's little figure that, you know, was a, an imaginary friend, but it was like, it just like something about that too. There was something like that kid has his own figure. Yeah. And it turned out to be his dad. Sure. So then we, you know, the whole czar face thing I was like, oh yeah, we got to start doing action figures and we got to start, you know, making, giving this, you know, comic books and a real lore to czar face, which has been a lot of fun and working my kids into the, into the comics and stuff. It just, it's, I don't know, it's something different. And no, I think it's great. And nobody's really, you know, the, the extension of that universe was fun when you got, you know, you were able to bring doom into it and doom had similar interests um, yeah, it, it's just great to see it expand and grow. And I, I feel, you know, for foremost as a fan, I feel it's the kind of thing where we haven't even seen its potential yet. I mean, we're just starting to see it now. Oh, well, thanks. Thank you. I, I mean, I, uh, definitely feel like we've had, um, you know, some really cool moments as of late, you know, yeah. being involved yeah. with, uh, the Venom, uh, two soundtrack was a really big deal for us. Uh, a really big, really big deal for me personally. I know how you had said you sold all your comic books and then you bought them back. Yeah. With with doing the Venom uh, soundtrack, you know, every every dollar I ever spent on anything Marvel, I just made it. You know, <laughs> we broke even. Now, yeah. now we're on the yeah. same. <laughs> it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, um, but that that was a, a real personal uh, milestone for yeah. me, and you know that's credit to tom hardy for for getting us involved you know which is incredible um just to just to go back to you know creating the character um when you sat down and fleshed the idea out with lamore were there a lot of ba exchanges back and forth with you know like where it was did he come to you with something you were like ah it's not right and was was there a lot of that or was the kind of thing where he sketched something out and you were you guys were pretty much in line right from the beginning 
I think we were in line pretty quickly because a lot of the references that I gave him and a lot of the inspirations that I gave him and a lot of the things that he brought to the character. So, I mean, he, you know, make no mistake, he drew Zarface and created Zarface. So uh, the, the look of him. Um, so, I mean, I think a lot of conversations about Jack Kirby and yeah. go- golden age, silver age comic books, uh, characters like Ultron and, and um, Doom and so forth. The, all these things kind of came together. These are some of the things that we would discuss discuss at length. And um, I remember it was me, Lamore, uh, and this this guy Sucklord who made the first um, Zarface figure. Yeah, he's kind of a yeah. p- pioneer on, on the actual, you know, on the custom toy circuit. Um, we just talked about comics for a long time, and and we wound up. This was in, in Brooklyn, I think, somewhere in New York. We went home, and and then I think maybe it was a couple of weeks later. I was looking at Lamore's first iteration of, of the look for Zarface, and I I couldn't I couldn't be happier. I was like blown away. I was like, this this is just this is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It just yeah. came together. He knew exactly what we were looking for, and uh, he nailed it. And it's crazy because you know when you look at the first you know, the first drawings of Zarface that people saw in terms of, you know, the artwork on the cover and, and now, you know, right down to the lunchbox, it, it's pretty consistent. Like, it doesn't look like it, like it looked like you guys, it seems like you guys had a solid idea from the beginning. And that just shows that obviously it held, it had weight because it, it stuck. I mean, there hasn't, from what I've seen, and I, I, I granted, I haven't done side-by-side comparisons and examinations, but it, it really seems yeah. like the character is cemented. Like this is the look of the character. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at Spider-Man, you know what I mean? It probably took him about 20, 24, 25 years so that black suit came out. You know what I mean? So he yeah. had a, a real... Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. got a ways to go before yeah, we yeah, start yeah, switching exactly. uh, uh, You know, you had Batman with the yellow utility belt and then, you know, in the Grace Mandex and now he's all blacked out. Uh, no, uh, it, it is a pretty um, consistent look for sure. Um, but with the, the, the new figures through super seven, uh, some of the, the models have been a little bit different color, color wise, you right. know, which made, which made for some interesting uh, combinations and origins and ideas to kind of add, yeah. add to the Zarface universe. But um, you know, that one that you see on the album cover, I think from the first album to now he's, you know, Lamore likes to change up his style a tiny bit here and there and show me yeah. what else he can do, you know, and he, right. he's always wearing, referencing different artists when he's telling me what he's doing with this and that, like the first Zarface and uh, Zarface meets metal face album. He, he put, you know, a lot of di- a different, he was working on different energy there when he, when he did that versus the first, the first album. So I love the guy's look. We need some, we need some more um, cosplayers out there and some uh, Halloween costumes. You know, I think anytime I see someone that's dressed up like Zarface, just like blows my mind. I mean, not that it happens, not that it happens a lot, but it, uh, people have gone out uh, for Halloween. It's our face. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, be satisfying. Yeah. And it's just like the, the whole thing with that is that it just kind of came from from behind in a way, because I put everything I had for so long in the hip hop that de- really literally dedicated my life to it because mm. I've been doing it. For, for ages and ages well, you know that, that's the thing you know like it's it's your your people don't think oh yeah this thing is just like you know just less than 10 years old or whatever but no i mean you fucking were slugging yeah. it out as an mc for years and you had years, a great yeah. great fall a great underground following you guys like you guys and it almost seemed to the point where you guys were doing it and then it was like well you guys where are you going to go from here unless you know you just keep doing it but then you start this idea right. and it just brings it i mean it brings it to a whole other universe, but it's fun to see people discover the old stuff and be like, shit, this guy's been rapping for a long fucking time. Yeah. I, I think that's, that, that is a real cool aspect of it, you know, and, and with Zarface, it's sort of a, definitely a, a second act or a rebirth in some people's eyes, you know, it, which is fine with me. Cause I think a lot of people, it's got to the point where, you know, Wu Tang is omnipresent. Of course, it's just mm-hmm. like the biggest thing, in hip hop, you know what I mean? Just Wu Tang is forever. But right. there are people that listen to Zarface that don't realize one of the guys in Zarface is from Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. And there's people that that think Zarface is one guy. Yeah. Right? Like just just I'm Zarface or just Dex Zarface or you know right. you hear somebody say yeah Zarface is my favorite rapper and it's right. like well Zarface <laughs> is uh two different you're hearing two different rappers mostly and you know the producer and so forth so I love the casual fan 
um, yeah. that doesn't need to dig into every nook and cranny of Zarface to appreciate the music or to appreciate the comic books or to appreciate the action figures. You know, there are people that buy the action figures because they're into collecting action figures and they think he looks cool and yeah. the music is secondary for them. Sure. So it's like, I never thought that was going to happen. You know what I mean? And it, it just, this thing where all this stuff, I, I just loved so much since a kid, since I was a kid. Now I'm, uh, we're, we're at this point where we're creating figures and toys and, and we have plans, bigger plans, like, coming down the pipeline in that world and yeah. uh you know just from rocking the mic man and, and and going just deciding to take a left and uh it's it's working out yeah well it's uh it's fun to follow um it's it's the kind of thing that causes a lot of uproar in my house when i'm ordering something else <laughs> like, my, like my wife say well, would you really need why do you you're like 51 why do you need a fucking metal lunchbox but i need a metal lunchbox come on man got the trading cards and the cassette that i'm right. never gonna unwrap it in. i mean i needed that right yeah we'll see yeah i mean I, and i do the same thing with, with certain <laughs> things i try to justify yeah having that and my wife is you know has a different perspective on things but um it's just uh if things, you know, we have a some Star Wars an ad at. I don't know if you call if you personally call it an ad at or an ATAT. -AT. I call it an ad at. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. So me, me too. Um, so <laughs> I, I get into it with people to call it ATAT -AT and whatever. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll just have an ad at in the living room, or it'll be in the backyard, or, or it'll be somewhere in the house that it, it shouldn't be. It's it yeah. really it's really supposed to be like in my son's room or like. <clears throat> in the playroom somewhere but i but and my wife is like well why is this here and i'm like well i see it i catch it out of the corner of my eye and it just brings me happiness i yeah. don't know it's like i like seeing that in the way off in the sure. back oh there's a there's an ad at in our yard or yeah. there's an ad at just by the fire but whatever it is it just kind of uh it's a little bit of a, a, a stimulus that you see and it's just like yeah, edits. I don't know. <laughs> no, I know. I listen. I, I think it's you know I, you get to a certain point in your life and you want you want what you want. And you want things that, that comfort you and make you happy. And when when I was renovating my house, we um, I have a friend of mine who's a welder and he welded the front fence. And on each side of the fence, he said, "I want to put something really cool in the front of your fence." So each side has matching black flag logos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's cool. So it's the black flag bars, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, I, you know, that's when I realized I married the the right person because she was like, well, if it makes you happy, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And, and then that, on top, that's... we put little rebel Alliance symbols that were welded into there too. So, you know, you'll get kids that come by wow. and they'll be like, you know, and the skate kids will come by and they'll be like, I see them doing a double take when they pass by my house. And I'm like, is that the fucking black flag logo? So yeah, ha having an so ad at in your backyard, I, I get that. <laughs> Send me a picture of that. I never, I, I, I can't even, I know I've never been to your house or anything, but I figured I, that might've come up somewhere along the way. Yeah, I, we I would should. love to see this. I, I'll <laughs> definitely send it to you. And the best part is my buddy who welded it um, used to own a skate shop. And the reason why he put the little Rebel Alliance emblems on the top of the fence is he's like, I don't want some kid grinding across your fence on his board. Like that's what oh, he thinks. That's the first thing he thought of, and I'm like, okay, I sure. See. Yeah, I don't have a heavy, heavy skateboard traffic on your street. I, not I, really at all. That's what I, I was like, dude. I'm not really worried about it, but he seemed to be. So, anyways, yeah. it all worked out for me. But I understand having things, you know, compromises within a couple. Um, sometimes, you know, you got to. And my wife gets it at this point. You know, she'll she'll see certain things in my house. Like this is my little room, but it still opens up to the rest of an open space where people will come in and go, what the fuck is going on in there? And she's like, well, it's Jason's space. And yeah, <laughs> but she doesn't mind, you know, because the thing is my space right. just kind of extends into the rest of the house. But I, yeah. <laughs> what's great about the aesthetic of our face and what's great about the project and all that is that it's passion. Um, and there, you feel the passion in it. And you were mentioning before coming in, you know, it, it, it's got so many different aspects to it. The casual fan can come in and just enjoy the music, not know too much about it. But then the person that wants to dig, and really can dig and can go down a rabbit's hole and find out all this stuff. So it's, yeah. it, I think it works to your favor for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I mean, there are a lot of bands, I know, you know, music cold, so it's like, yeah. but there are a lot of bands that I like and I dig their tunes and maybe I can't name every member of the group. You know what I mean? And that's, that, that's, yeah, uh, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
before the, I had a mindset where it was like, oh, well, you're faking if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it just, people like music and there are people that get really, really deep into it, like you and I. And there are people that put it on because, you know, it helps them work out. It helps them get take their mind off things. I just, I don't know. So if, if somebody thinks Zarface is one person, I think it's great. Sure. You know, sure. But just as long as they're, when they picture Zarface, they picture my voice, and not Dex. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no that's no, definitely no, make, no. that's definitely making no. the sound bite <laughs> <laughs> no well the thing is like when, whenever someone says like oh it's our face my favorite rapper i'm like eh, they got to be talking about that you know <laughs> so, <laughs> um but yeah we're very you know and when i was what i was saying earlier about like, finding common ground i mean it just emceeing is you know wordplay and yeah that's what really to me that's been my favorite aspect of of Dex um repertoire is just you know rhyming with punchlines and and wordplay and and just kind of cartoon violence things like that and that's really where we met in the middle where yeah. it's you know I think we both and him especially could tell great stories um but with the czar face stuff we just kind of like letting loose and, and um having fun with it um now to talk more on the music side of things, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the about Zarface, the, you know, the character, the, the 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 creation of that whole the name of the project, and but there's the whole music side of it too, which is super super interesting because you guys don't necessarily approach hip hop the way a lot of people will, where you'll just grab stuff and sample. You guys have actual real music that's created for this. Um, yeah, and not a lot of people talk about the Zar Keys and and talk about Jeremy and and um, and George, well, Seven uh, L. I'll put yep. that out. I want to keep his uh, keep his anonymity. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but that's no, okay. But, we but call the, him George. Yeah. The thing is, that stuff um, is a whole other level. That's and a whole other layer to our face that that I find is very very interesting as a musician because there's a lot of great stuff that's going on just in that. Um, and you know the, the the evidence of that is when you listen to the instrumentals because they really hold up on their own. No offense to you guys, but but they're, yeah. you guys are rapping over stuff that's solid and is original. Um, in terms of that what is the creation like for that? Do you have, are you able to just sit back and have that delivered to you and go, I'm going to work with what I have, or are you involved with that as well? Um, George will tell you I'm I'm involved um, in not so much like the melodies. Sorry. When I start to really like put myself over and big myself up, I start to get a little. Yeah. You're choking up. I can see that. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my conscience telling me, don't say this, don't say this. Uh, no, with, um, with the music, musical process, Jeremy and 7L will work on things. You know, yeah. 7L, he does a lot of the, the drum programming, the chopping, the, the sampling of live music, of right. original music. So sure. he, he's not sampling for someone else's record. He's sampling from something that they created uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. With Jeremy, right, and and so there's still the the, the art of, of sampling and programming and so forth is in there, but it's coming from original music, music which is yeah. which is which is very unique for hip hop. I mean, I think a yeah. lot of people are starting to get onto that a bit more now because they don't want to deal with clearances and stuff as much, right? But it's yeah. it's but it's but I love the fact that you guys do that because that really yeah. it like, whole, adds a whole other layer of musicianship for sure, and and that's a big part of. Um, our formula i guess you know and avoiding lawsuits and and <laughs> just clearances and things like that it's a, it makes it a lot easier and a lot of a lot of artists they roll the dice and don't try to clear things which we try to do things the right way um uh, with our face because it's a bigger it's a bigger scale thing you know what i mean if it's a more underground release you might be able to get away with doing things like that but we like to have you know our bases covered and yeah. we like to have you know, the Zark Keys, 7L and Jeremy Page, they, you know, they work really well together. And I think they both bring something very valuable to the final piece of the music. Definitely. And I, I guess what I was saying was with me being involved, I'm not so much involved with the actual melodies of the music, but I, the sequencing is very important to me. The, um, the drops, the drum fills, we take the bass out here. We bring the horns in there. Uh, we got to stutter this drum. We have to add, you know, a little sound bite. Like if I, you know, ask you to do some type of quirky voice, like you did on the, um, on the strange song. Yeah. Um, I can sample that and, um, filter it. So it sounds like it's off, off an old TV show 
and put that in the mix. So all those little things are very important to me in terms of the finished product. Like sure. if I don't, if I don't splash in like a czar face, like little uh, trigger, like sample in there or anything, uh, it doesn't feel complete to me. Right. I like playing around with that stuff. So that's the only, only part I really play in it. And that's kind of like putting the icing on the cake or whatever. Right. But it's, but it's great that it's a really, truly a collaborative thing that everybody's involved with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have there ever been moments where you and 7L were, you know, you had something that was finished and you were just at odds and it was like, like, and I'm talking more with the Zarface project, were there ever point, was there ever a point where something cleared or maybe, you know, there was a song that you wanted on there and he didn't want absolutely. Um, and then all the time. Yeah. And can, can you name one that he was adamant about not having, and then you were adamant about having that ended up making it and did well. Uh, gee, I, I wish I had more time to think of this because it, there's definitely, definitely some good examples. Um, because there are times where I looked at him, I was like, what I tell you? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and I imagine vice versa, right? And vice. Yeah. Yes. No, no absolutely. Yeah. Um, more recently, um, some of the things like, uh, uh, Mando Carizian, right. Yep. I like uh, off the super what album. Yeah. I loved the music, right. Loved it. I thought it was so cool. And I did not, know if it was going to work for a rap record yeah and yeah. The, the drums were really light and it was just had this something like it didn't put me in that frame of mind but but 7l was like yeah, trust me on this one this one and i i knew it was dope music but yeah. in terms of rhyming over it um it was just took a little bit a little bit of a arm twisting but you know once we send or sent you know, the, the beats off to doom or, or deck to record to, or if we're in the studio together, like with deck, you know, deck will definitely have his opinions on some of the beats too. And th there's times where deck will be like, nah, I don't know about this one, but I trust you guys. Cause you know, everyone seems to like, you know, what we do with this, our face stuff. And, you know, the, the important thing to remember is that it's all coming from the desire to make the best record yeah. and fulfill, you know, your vision. And you have to, you have to let some of your ego go and, and let the other guys in the group drive sometimes, you know what I mean? And sure. I could, I could, I could probably, you know, do that a little more often. And, and I, and I have been, and that song is a good example of it. And I love that song. It's like my, maybe oh, my same. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, it's one of my favorite songs on that record. No, I mean, okay. it, it really is. And I, and I, every time it comes on, I'm like, I like this. It's different. Yeah, it's and it's different, and that's yeah. um, that's a big part of it too. Because one of the things with with this music, hip hop, man, over the years, we've seen a lot of different eras come and go, and a lot of it can get very samey. Like, oh, yeah. I've heard that before. Yeah, I've yep. heard that before. Definitely. So you try to find this point where you can do something that you love, and you want, you're proud of, and you want to share with the world, but it also has to maybe be something that people didn't expect or didn't see coming, you know, like they didn't yeah. know they wanted that beat. Right. And, and yeah. that was, um, that's kind of important for us over the past four or five albums, because, you know, the first couple albums, we were just going hard with what I'd say would be a formula that we always used, like from seven L esoteric days, you know, me and seven L just straight up, hip hop and you know there were some samples on those records too and you know we, we got down with dj premier on one of the records and the newer records we're just looking for ways to you know challenge ourselves a little bit more and maybe bring something a little different but still have it fall within the czar face under the czar face umbrella you know to, to the to someone that listens to one of these albums i don't know if they're gonna say oh well that's you know that's vintage czar face sound and this is new <laughs> yeah, yeah, schools it, it, yeah, it might yeah. just all sound the same to people but sure. to us everything is is very different or very like extreme even though it's the most subtle thing to right. you know somebody that's just picking up a record to enjoy it and i think what's good too is you guys are always trying to, to switch it up and push the envelope a little bit and i and and someone who is uh, you know invested in it can see that you know from each record oh they're pushing oh it. yeah and you know um uh, especially on um um, the name of the album is escaping me now, but uh, right after the uh, the first Doom record, um, uh, the odds are against us. Yeah, Maybe. that was the record. I, I felt in that record, you really pushed the envelope. You really went yeah. in different directions, and it was really cool. 
to see you guys oh, just thanks. kind of break out of just the straight up hip hop mold and, and just kind of expand the sound a little bit. Um, it was good. And, you know, I, I yeah. and you know, it sounds like burrito. I think a lot of people were like, and they were, look how I'm sure when you were doing that at one point, someone must have said, hey, really? But it, yeah. but look how much it stuck and people, yeah. you know. Well, see, those, those are the type of songs where it's like, all right, that's going to make the album. And, and, you know, I know, I know in my heart of hearts, yeah, Deck doesn't want to rap about shit in his pants. At of course and, uh, not. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so, but I have that creative vision that I, <laughs> that I have to talk about yeah. diarrhea on a record. No, um, it was just one of those things where, you know, bringing a little bit of comedy to it could, in storytelling can't hurt, you know? Yeah. So I'm glad that you, kind of heard you know a different sound from us you know a lot of the times like you know all the trap stuff and and things that are going on outside of yeah i can't do it I, I you know i've had discussions with you about this where i've and you're pretty you're pretty um statesman like about it like i've sent you messages going this is fucking garbage you're like oh no you gotta find the you know it's pretty good i'm like no it's fucking shit because i really for me i grew up in an era where you had to be able to, you had to be able to spit and if you couldn't do that yeah. what are you doing um that's why i got right. like following a guy like denzel curry now um, yeah he's, yeah, he's just great deadly and i and the first yeah. thing i thought of was like man he would be a great guy to collaborate with you guys yeah, we've definitely we've considered that, you know, but his I think his um what do you call it level um or his uh platform. Yeah. He's a he's a bigger artist than we are. Uh you know. Yeah, but he still would be a great guy. To, I mean, when, when oh. I just think cuz I think I hear how he raps and I hear his wordplay and I'm like, you know, in terms of a collab it would be I could see it happening. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we would love to do that. And I he's he's a one of the newer guys that I like a lot. So yeah, I would love to make that same. happen. I guess what I was saying was that that's not as easy. Uh, it's easier said than done. You know what I mean? Because he's not one of our peers, sure. not someone sure. we grew up with. Anyone that, you know, from our era, like 90s, 2000s era, I can I feel pretty confident in being able to kind of reach out in one way or another. Uh, but he's part of a you know a newer crop of of artists even though he's you know he's been putting out records for probably a decade at this point yeah. Yeah. it just things go so you know this is a bigger conversation but hip-hop from like 86 to 96 really uh felt like 40 to 50 years in there mm. with you know everything changed. like 87 was so much different than like 91 and 91 and 96. They felt like they were decades away and it's just a matter of years. Yeah. So if you're really following um, a lot of the newer music to a kid that that's 17, 18 at this point, he could tell you that, man, the first, like the last Rick Ross record is so much different than, uh, I don't know, the YG record from two years before that, or, or, but somebody else will put those on and be like, this shit sounds exactly the same to me. You know, it just sounds so, and I don't mean them specifically. It's just, it's, impo it's, it's impossible for, to, I think, to make a bad trap beat if you like trap. Mm -hmm. I don't know, because because you, it's just, when that drum hits, it's like, everyone's going to do this. It doesn't, it, yeah. it, it seems very simple. And sure. I don't have any inclination or desire to rap on anything like that, but it's like, you just go like this on a keyboard with them, some weird sound. And I'm not trying to like be reductive of the process. It just seems very, you can win pretty easily with mm. any trap beat. It, I don't know. It, the yeah. whole and, and, and then the whole, you know, the whole repeating one fucking thing over and over again. And then having, Oh, Oh, the chorus and stuff yeah definitely it, i you know I, I just don't i for me it's just it just it and that's where i feel am i just the you know the old man and you know yelling at a cloud like that yeah but it, but but if it, maybe that's just something that happens to everybody but well yeah yeah it doesn't speak you, to me you, you might yeah right no i know but and i think being cognizant of that is important too because you you, you think if you take about well, 10 albums from uh 88 to 92 and you play it for a kid uh that's 16 17 he might he might be saying geez every one of these songs has the same james brown yeah. breakbeat yeah. or every <laughs> yeah, yeah, every yeah, single yeah, one yeah. of these things it's the exact thing it's 102 beats per minute mm -hmm. and you know it's got this little Ew! and a boom 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 bass line it's the same shit every song but to us it was just a completely very vast universe of sounds and personalities and 
I don't know. So I try to be fair. I know I'm yeah. just ex- yeah. expanding no, on gonna, this because you said I'm, I'm statesmanlike about it because yeah. I try to take some perspective because there's no stopping time. Yeah. And and the kids that write about these newer songs are kids that, you know, just journalists or whoever that favor this stuff because this is part of their history. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, 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 the guys that wrote the source aren't the guys that are reviewing, uh, you know, the newest uh, Doja Cat record or, you know, at least yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to address a rumor, um, this ridiculous rumor about um, Frankie Pulitzer. Um, you know, th- there's oh. there's people that are coming to me and saying that, um, you know, that's that, that's so and so, that's so and so. And I had this stupid thing that this is fucking Tom Hardy. Like, you know, I know Tom was involved with having you guys on the Venom, but like, why would Tom Hardy have time to fucking rap in Zarkis? Like, where do people <laughs> right. get this? Where do people yeah. get this fucking idea? Like, where I did that come? That. It, it's crazy. I see it in the comments and people ask me, you're not the first person to ask me that. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's by virtue of us deciding to put him on the Venom s- soundtrack. Like Fra- Frank's never rhymed before on a record. And the right. first record that we put him on is on, on in the Venom movie. So it's like, people are like, Oh, well, how, how did that happen? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's we, so fucking, you know, st- the, I mean, it's like the one of the, they, honestly, it's one of the dumbest rumors I've heard. Like it really they think is. that. Well, yeah, I think Tom used to rap back in the day yeah. and, you know, and I think, when I developed like this friendship with Tom, we talk about hip hop and he knows his shit. So mm-hmm. he'll go back and forth with, he'll talk about anything from the nineties and so forth. And that's been, you know, a frequent thing that we would revisit talking about hip hop. And, and uh, this guy, uh, Frankie is completely like he's newer. He's not, he doesn't yeah. know hip hop like that. Yeah. He's much more into the character aspect of it and just sounding, he loves rhyming, but he's not like a historian. Right. You know, he's just kind of like a, I don't know how to, even, he's one of those guys. He's just kind of learning Instagram and all that stuff now. So it's like, it's kind of I, I, like, he probably wouldn't even see this, you know, there's probably a better <laughs> chance of Tom Hardy seeing this than, than Frankie Pulitzer. He just doesn't know how to, he's just got a good voice. So we, yeah. we fuck with him, you know? Thanks for clearing that up. Cause I, I mean, yeah. some, I had, and I had to address it cause it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's well, you know, I, I see how people can kind of draw the conclusion. Like who's this guy all of a sudden on a, Zarface record and yeah and, and he's on the the venom thing and so trust me, so many people have said it to me i'm like it's funny at this point it's like it, it would be cool if it was tom because tom is you know he's the man he's just the, like one of the greatest actors of all time and you know it would be like a feather in our cap to have collaborated with him in that sense but it's it's frankie and he's <laughs> he, he, he lives about three blocks that way that's all. He's a great guy. <laughs> um, all right. So let me ask you um, before, before I let you go, uh, you know, obviously people always want to know when Zarface is going to perform. And I know for you guys touring with Dex commitments, um, with your commitment, like, you know, family, like everything you, that you guys have a lot on the go outside of Zarface. When you do, you know, put together live shows, A, is it gratifying for you guys? Do you guys enjoy it? And B, can you see yourselves doing a little bit more of that? Um, now that things have kind of loosened up and now that the world's a little bit back to normal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a lot of fun doing it and it's always um, a matter of scheduling with us really, because with Dex commitment to Wu-Tang, which is, you know, one of the most, uh, how do I say it? Uh, I can't argue against it. You know what I mean? No, like, yeah, I'm like, no. whoa, 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 you know, what, why would you go out on the, on the road with Wu-Tang Clan and Nas when you can just hang out with me in seven. <laughs> it's yeah. not, not, not a very compelling argument. Right. Because, um, you know, it's just how things are. So we kind of have to go by the Wu-Tang schedule. And, you know, there are times where, like, we, we want to get, get on the road, but Deck just got off the road and he wants to spend time with, with his kids and his family. And so it's like, if he goes away for a month with Wu-Tang Clan, the second he comes back, you know, he doesn't want to go on the, on the road again with us, but as you've seen, you know, we, we, we do it when we can find the time to make mm-hmm. it happen. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I mean, we get offers a lot. We get offers from Australia, uh, New Zealand, Japan, uh, London, and, you know, the U S and so forth, um, Toronto. And it's, it's tempting, but I feel like the less we do it, the more special it is when we do do it. Sure. You know, and, and there are certain things that there are perks to not doing it personally for us. You know what I mean? I, I don't like being away from my kids that much. Yeah. I don't, um, you know, 7L 
he likes to get out on the road every once in a while, but he's not, you know, crazy about traveling. I like traveling and seeing places and doing things and, and rocking in front of people. Yeah. Um, but the time has to be right. The business has to be right. And our schedules have to connect. So it's, it's the perfect storm that has to happen. Yeah. It's the hindrance, you know, that, that of, of just having different commitments and groups. And I think everything else with us, fortunately is hitting on all cylinders as you had kind of said uh yeah. not not all cylinders but it's going pretty well where yeah we can diver- diversify the music into the comics into the the figures into the merchandise and have that all those things humming at the same time but getting on the road more often uh is something that's been a little bit of a struggle for us unique situation for a music group because usually it's the other way around it's it's we have to be on the road to make this work yeah. um, and all the other stuff falls into place when you're on the road but you guys it's almost like the less you're on the road yeah the better the, better the business is but yeah. but it also it also is because you guys are prolific in the fact that you are always keeping new releases i mean it's you guys are so consistent with the releases not many bands right. do that yeah you know it's i think it's truly because we enjoy doing it and we have fun doing it and staying uh somewhat relevant staying in people's faces doing what you know we like to do uh it works and and you don't have to be on the road all the time when people are buying your vinyl into the way that they buy our it's just we're so grateful for for you know the vinyl revolution i mean people buy it some people buy it and treat it like a calendar they just buy it to look at the cover and just put it on their wall they don't even play it and um you know, and they'll just stream the music, but they'll buy the albums to put money in our pockets. And that means so much. And I, there's not, there's nothing that's really changed. A lot of people look at, at, at vinyl as just like a little uh, companion piece. And that it's a big, big part of our business. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, I'm looking, all my records are in front of me now and I'm looking at my C-section. It's like yours is like that. You know, it's because I have to every fucking color and I have to have every, <laughs> right. but, that, but that, that speaks to my sickness that you have as well, which I know you understand. But yeah. I think, I think, yeah. you know, when you, when you believe in a project and when you believe in an artist, it's important to support them. And a lot of people will, you know, and the support can be, you know, it could be a share, it can be a like, but to actually put your money where your mouth is and support artists that you, that you really enjoy, it's, it's such an important part of the puzzle, especially with an independent artist. So, um, yeah, and, that, sure. and I think that's, what's great about you guys is that you guys are personal enough and uh, that you, that you've, you know, appeal to that side of people where they want to be invested in this. And that's, and that's a rare thing. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's nice to hear. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy uh, creating this stuff and, and putting it out. It's a thrill for us still. So we're, we're lucky to be in that position. Well, thanks again for taking time to chat today. Um, I know you got yeah, a lot man. going on and um, I, I, I appreciate being, being brought into this universe, even if it's a small little piece of it by doing yeah. some little things with you guys. My, yeah. my, you know, my, my wife still doesn't understand that she was on one of Doom's last recordings. And she's like, <laughs> the fact that I, you know, I brought my phone behind her and asked her to say these couple of lines in French. Yeah, and then she went right. back to her work. It was just like, it just, it, it's crazy. But, but I know you understand that because you put your kids on recordings and you, you know, yes. and, and for them, it's like, what? <laughs> right. Right. And, you know, um, that's one, that's a major part of the fun aspect for me. A hundred percent. But, you know, well, and your wife's a casual fan. You can't blame her. She doesn't know, you know, she's a casual fan. <laughs> hey, thank you for, thanks again. Um, thanks yeah, for keep thank doing you. this and keep creating, man. We, you know, I know that the fans love it and I love it and uh, looking forward to seeing you again, man. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. We'll talk soon, man. I really like how you went through the history of it because considering I don't know shit about fuck, I was like, I was glad that yeah. you were almost an avatar for my ignorance. You know, <laughs> and even though you probably know your stuff about them, you know, for the benefit of me and all the other viewers who like, you know, want to find out the treasure map of uh, the history of Zarface, we appreciate that. I gotta, I gotta say, that's what's good about this show. It's yeah. fun and informative. Yep, it's like GI Joe. <laughs> Knowing is half the battle. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but when did you first discover this group? Because you've been pushing for them forever, like uh, on your socials and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, even the virtual comic con we did, uh, you had an interview with him. Like you really like are have been waving the czar fl- the czar face flag forever. When did when did they come into your life? 
I just kind of got into them um, probably around the second album. Um, and I just, from the minute I listened to them, I was like, this is really, really good. And then, you know, they did a collaboration with one of my favorite hip hop artists, MF Doom. So when that happened, I was just like, wow, all bets are off. Um, and then I got to know the guys uh, so much so that I actually went on tour with them uh, at the end of 2021. I did a brief little uh, run with them on the East Coast and did merch and drove for them. So that was really funny for me being, a you know, like a seasoned musician uh, going out and being the merch guy. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. And it was I got to see one of my favorite bands, you know, a couple of nights in a row. Got to spend some time with um, with both SO and um, and uh, and DJ 7L and, you know, a bit with uh, Inspector Deck. So it was fun. It was really fun. And it was cool because one of my buddies, as you know, is MC Search from third base and search ended up coming to New York and jumped up on stage with them, which was huge for them because they're big, big fans of, of search and third base. And he came up and did a um, couple of songs with them. So that was really fun. So yeah, I have a, I have a fun little history with these guys and, um, and I, I'm looking forward to more adventures with Zarface. I want to go out and do merch with them again. <laughs> it was fun. Um, but, uh, Ryan, thank you so much for, uh, for hanging out again. It's been an absolute pleasure. We got more stuff coming. Um, I know this summer has been really busy for both of us. We've got so many other projects on the go, but we're keeping the Rockman power hour lights on and uh, a big thanks again to the guys that help us keep the lights on heartbeat hot sauce. They're absolutely wonderful. Go check them out. They are out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. And if you use my promo code, when you order Rockman 20, it will get you 20% off your entire order of hot sauce. Also, a big thanks to Studio House Designs for keeping us looking fresh. Uh, thanks to my co-host, Ryan Stick, and to our producer, Julia Kajerski, who presently is opening the, opening the door right now and letting our dog back inside, and she did it very quietly, impressed. Well done. Um, and thanks to all of you <laughs> for, uh, for being here with us on the Rockman Power Hour. We absolutely appreciate it. All of you guys, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and doing all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Rockman Power Hour.